Welcome. I am so glad you all could be here. Our friends, benefactors, alumni, parents, grateful patients, and grateful clients from across the country and around the world. We are also joined by our wonderful faculty, staff, and students in this virtual celebration. Tonight marks a truly momentous occasion as we embark on the public phase of the largest fundraising campaign in the history of UC Davis. As you may have heard in the press yesterday, we have set our sights on an ambitious goal to raise $2 billion. But it's not the amount of money that matters. What matters is the untapped potential such funding will unleash across the entire UC Davis community and the incredible impact that that talented and tenacious community will undoubtedly have on our world. That is what we are here to celebrate. Of course, we had hoped to share this moment with you in person, gathered here in this beautiful and beloved pavilion, where so many exciting basketball games and inspirational commencement ceremonies have taken place. It's actually a little strange to see this place so empty. But circumstances being what they are, we decide to change gears and go another route. Not cancellation or postponement, as some of you might have expected. That's just not our way. Instead, we wanted to persevere, do something innovative, surprising, and creative. You might say we wanted to defy expectations. So like many of you, I'll be celebrating this historic event with my family from the comfort and safety of my own home. Please join us. Take a breath, make a wish, count to three, and enjoy the ride. to the wonderful world of UC Davis. Welcome to a place where we dare to dream, where big ideas are bursting at the scene. From clean water to food to kicking COVID-19. If there's a problem to solve, you'll find us Aggies on the scene. We're reinventing medicine, studying the brain. Searching for new ways to alleviate your pain. We're elevating good and giving access to our kinds. And the way we use technology is gonna blow your mind. Imagine. Visionary leaders with the guts to change the game. We're status quo breakers and risk takers. Connecting global Aggies with a mission to sustain. We care about the climate and defending human rights. Describing innovation and eliminating blights. We're all about big data, it's a scientific fact. You should look at all the evidence before you start to act. We're making aging easier, we put the fine in art. Always pushing boundaries, but doing it with heart. We're building the economy, protecting young and old. Point to see the future and paint it blue and gold. Vision 
legendary leaders with the guts to change the game. We're status quo breakers and risk takers. Connecting global Abby with a mission to sustain. Oh, hi there. I'm so glad you could make it. There's so much to show you and so many exciting things to tell you about. I hardly know where to get started. Perhaps I should begin by addressing the questions that are lingering at the back of many people's minds. Why this campaign and why right now with so much going on in the world around us? Well, from my perspective, the world has never needed a place like UC Davis and the work we're doing more than it does at this very moment. And we've never been more ready. We have a great leadership team in place with an exciting and modern vision of what higher education can and should be moving forward. I consider myself fortunate every day to be surrounded by such capable and committed people. We have a powerful new branding effort underway to share the strength of UC Davis with a larger, more diverse community. In the past, this story has been far too understated. Our days of humble bragging are done. And we have several big ideas in the works that are transforming the world for the better. They include our One Climate Initiative, which drives collaboration and research across and beyond the university to move us toward a healthier, low carbon future. Here, let me show you an example. One UC Davis study found that grasslands and rangelands are better for storing carbon in a vulnerable climate than forests. That's because they are less impacted by droughts and fires. Unlike forests, which store carbon mostly in the trunks and leaves of the trees, grasslands sequester carbon underground when fires cause trees to go up in flames, the burned carbon they formerly stored is released back into the atmosphere. That contributes to greenhouse gases. In contrast, when fire burns grasslands, the carbon secured underground tends to stay in the roots and the soil, making them more adaptive to climate change. Knowing this, conserving grasslands and promoting rangeland practices that promote reliable rates of carbon sequestration could help us more readily meet California's emission reduction goals. And we have faculty and students working on the front lines of this important endeavor. From my perspective, One Climate is probably one of the most exciting things that's happening at UC Davis, but it's only one example among many. Wow, as an engineer and a science fiction fan myself, the idea of combining technology with agriculture really captures my imagination. And the UC Davis Smart Farm does just that, and more. You might say they're redefining the future of farming. Here, let's take a closer look. As a powerhouse in the advancement of agriculture, UC Davis is always growing, but in ways greater than you might expect. Today, the rich history of the University Farm has grown into UC Davis Smart Farm, an exciting program that applies cutting edge technology to food production. Smart Farm is an answer to urgent challenges, how to feed a growing planet and protect the resources that will feed future generations. UC Davis experts are leading the way, engineering high tech robotics and techniques to make the most of every bite we grow. There are new methods that will allow farmers like me to save water, reduce pesticides, grow nutritious crops, and raise healthier livestock. One way Smart Farm assists farmers is in tracking livestock and herd health and behavior. Cassandra Tucker is a leading faculty member in this area. One of the challenges, for example, is about how do we detect when animals get sick? And of course, we can do this with our eyes and ears and by going out and watching the animals. Uh, but we know that if we use technology, we have the potential to detect a sick animal even sooner, for example, um, because things like um, how much they eat, that starts to change in some cases a couple days before we are able to detect that as humans on our own. So I think about technology really amplifying our intention. If our intention is to care for our animals and for the land that we farm, uh, that, that using technology to help us do more of that is really exciting. In addition to livestock care, technology is revolutionizing plant-based agriculture. Among vineyards, for example, UC Davis is applying artificial intelligence to help build a better grape. The goal is to reduce surprises come harvest time. So, 
healthy, efficiently grown grapes can make it into our world famous California wines. Faculty members in viticulture and enology are researching sensory technologies to prevent disease and predict yield volumes. Autonomous robots are doing what humans cannot, calibrating grape growth and predicting how much grape juice will be harvested at the end of a growing season. Affordable sensory technology is being developed to do what would be cost prohibitive for farm workers, gathering data on growth and predicting future yields in vineyards. So we know that agriculture is a complex environment and UC Davis is one of the best places in the world because we have the expertise in engineering, computer science and biology that's needed to really pull this off and to make novel, innovative solutions for agriculture. And as for me, I am a berry and tomato grower right here in Northern California and a proud graduate of UC Davis. I believe UC Davis's smart farm will build the farm of the future. In the last five to seven years, there's so much exciting things happening in agriculture and so many of those exciting things are happening on this campus that are gonna change the way food is eaten, produced, looked at in the future. And it is absolutely one of the most exciting times to be in agriculture in my career. Incredible stuff, but crops and livestock aren't the only things we're growing at UC Davis. One of the achievements I'm most proud of is the student experience that UC Davis offers to undergraduates. A large percentage of them are the first in their families to attend college. We're also deeply committed to diversity. Our last three classes of freshmen were the most diverse in the university's history. And I'm proud to share that we are on the cusp of becoming a Hispanic serving institution with nearly 25% of our enrolled undergraduates being Chicanx Latinx. What I'm really trying to say here is we're privileged to serve some of the most talented and deserving young people the world has to offer. Here, you should meet some of them. I am the first in my family to go to college. Having my younger siblings has definitely shaped my life and encouraged me to set a good example for them throughout my life. I'm actually born from Hong Kong, China. I had to learn English as a second language. So it was kind of a struggle for me. I grew up in the Central Valley of California. It was a pretty working class town. So I feel like a lot of reasons why my friends don't go to college is like, of course, like financial reasons. Since I didn't want my grandmother to be like supporting me all the way, like be a financial burden to her. I was looking at getting recruited to different colleges to play football, and there's only a certain amount of spots, so someone might end up not getting in. I knew the kind of person I wanted to be in terms of leadership qualities and the people I admired, but I knew like I wasn't that person yet. So in high school, I took the hardest classes, pushed myself, strived to be the best I can because I knew I wanted to get into a good college. The reason why I chose Davis was mainly for the support that they have for first-gen students. My parents were immigrants that came here from India. I really wanted to do something to like keep me engaged with that community, and that's part of the reason why I'm glad I chose to come here. So I was still waiting, and then I got that phone call. We want to give you a scholarship. I was pretty relieved just knowing that it actually had happened. During my first year of community college, I was diagnosed with Hodgkin's. During my third relapse, I almost gave up. I felt like I had been knocked down so many times, but I gave it one last shot. And here I am at Davis, almost at that finish line. I think Davis has changed my life in a way where it not only taught me about classes and coursework, but also about myself, my own interests, my own abilities. With all the, like the very generous scholarships and financial aid I received, thinking if it wasn't for that foundation, I wouldn't be here at all. Because without the scholarship, I would have ever known about the wonders of UC Davis. I just, I think it's opened a lot of new doors for me that I don't know if I can completely explain. It's an opportunity that my parents didn't get to have, so I'm really grateful to be in college and the fact that 
there's someone out there who recognizes my effort to reach my goal of wanting to give back to the community. I work with a team specifically that designs curriculums to educate students with HIV in our rural village in India. So, you know, receiving some sort of like um, acknowledgement of like, wow, you know, we really think what you're doing is like worthy of a scholarship, you know. First, it brought me to tears knowing that there are other people at Davis who have faced the same struggles I have. And then also this aid for students who really want to study abroad. So it gives students a lot of opportunities to develop themselves and explore and figure out what they want in their life, the person they want to be by the time they graduate. It felt like there were people there for me and I wasn't doing it alone. And I feel like Davis has been shouting, go Sergio, go Sergio, for like the last three years. Because once you have that support system, like you're good to go. It's taught me to expect more for myself and so what we can do if we all band together. With as little fear as possible and with as much hope as possible. So just a thank you would be the biggest thing. Thank you, UC Davis. <laughs>Hi, my name is Bianca Lanfield and I'm a third year vet student. My focus is small animals. And I'm Sean Gadsden, also a vet student and in my fourth and final year with the goal of practicing emergency medicine after graduation. Becoming a veterinarian has always been a lifelong dream of mine, but I think my decision was truly solidified when I took a gap year after my undergraduate years to work at a clinic. I absolutely loved it and it really inspired me to take the next step, that and my eight pound rescue pup Lexi. I know just what you mean about a lifelong dream, Bianca. My ambition started in kindergarten, and I even have a little crayon written plaque with the word veterinarian spelled terribly on it. In fact, I've been volunteering in clinics since I was 14 years old, and the dog that really sealed the deal for me was a childhood pet named Debo. My mom was essentially a single parent raising two mixed-race kids in a low-income neighborhood in the Bay Area, and it was really tough at times, but my family's encouragement uh, and Debo really helped me get through that. And now I can say I'm at uh, the number one veterinary school in the world. And Davis really lives up to all the hype. I just absolutely love the feel of the campus and having access to a teaching hospital within sight of where we're having lectures. It's one of the things I've missed most while studying from home. And then obviously there's the world-class education. You can't really argue with that. I agree. Davis just has that next level reputation. And the sense of community that I've experienced here is amazing, not only among the students, but among the faculty and staff as well. Another thing I really love are the success stories that happen every single day and the opportunity we have to work with patients and clients alongside some of the best veterinarians and researchers in the world. Me too. Hey, why don't we share a few stories now? Here's one about a courageous recovery. When Dr. Robert Skillman suggested that Trish and Chuck Brandt Robert give llamas a try on their RBR ranch, little did she know that she was kindling a passion that would span over 20 years. She also couldn't know that she would have a hand in treating Bella, the bionic llama, the ranch's most famous and inspiring resident. In 2010, during a frolic in the pasture, Bella stepped into a gopher hole and broke her hind leg. Infection set in and ultimately claimed her leg. Dr. Skillman suggested they seek out the services of a prosthetic specialist. The specialist designed and perfected the prosthetic for Bella. In one short hour, Bella adapted to her leg and then galloped into her future, inspiring her human counterparts to focus on their abilities rather than their disabilities. Bella lived happily eight years after that faithful misstep, passing away in 2018 at the ripe old age of 21. She will continue to inspire future veterinarians at UC Davis through their gift in naming one of the holding stalls in the future Equine Performance Center in her name and they regularly host UC Davis vet students on the RBR ranch to provide them with hands-on opportunity to work with llamas. In watching the students warm up to the llamas, Trish and Chuck have seen firsthand how animals can inspire people to live their best lives. 
my vet has just been phenomenal and, and she's a graduate of Davis and then I was, so my backup vet is from UC Davis and my backup backup vet that's in case someone's on vacation and the other one can't make it is from Davis and I won't take them if they're from someplace else. Sean, that's a great story that highlights what we get to do on a daily basis in vet med. Now let me tell you another success story. Doc, a purebred blue Abyssinian, has a mission in life, to spread love and cuddles wherever he can. He aptly lives up to his Valentine's Day birthday by leading the life of a sweetheart despite his many medical challenges. While recovering in the UC Davis vet med ICU from surgery to remove two benign tumors from his thymus gland, Doc struggled out of his cage to snuggle up on the lap of his attending veterinarian. His favorite spot by far, though, is atop the shoulder of his human mom, Lynn Zucconi, where he can purr sweet nothings into her ear. He's kind of a mess, Lynn says, referring to his health issues, but he doesn't know that. He's the world's happiest, most affectionate guy you've ever met. When Lynn purchased Doc and her two other furry kids, Pinky and Itsy, she thought they were healthy cats. In reality, the trio suffered from an array of medical issues that range from vision impairment to asthma to kidney disease. Rather than returning them, Lim committed to caring for them with ongoing help from the expert UC Davis care team. What forges this strong bond of love between animals and humans? Lynn's relationship with her cats defines this bond, and she's also witnessed it in the dedicated, caring hands and hearts of the vet med faculty, students, and staff at UC Davis. I'm very grateful to vet med for all they've done for my little guy and for his sisters. Thank you. Oh, that's another good one, Bianca. And here's our final story, and get ready, it gets pretty dramatic. In the midnight haze of smoke from California's devastating campfire, Jim Clark had a gut-wrenching decision to make. He'd already spirited his family through the encroaching flames to safety, and now he only had time to save himself, and if he chose, his beloved goat, Feather. Feather was a working goat on Jim's farm, and she and her 15 other herdmates grazed to keep the brush at bay. But Feather was special. In addition to leading the herd, she adopted the family dog's behavior of rubbing up against a person's leg to secure an ear scratch or a belly rub. She would chase after Jim's ranger and off they'd go to check fences. As much as he loved Feather, he knew the rest of the goats would never make it without her leadership, and so he chose to leave her behind with them. The next few days were a horror for Jim and his family as they sought news of their herd, and the call finally came in. Jim's goats had been found. Miraculously, they all seemed to be alive, but four had been burned, and one of them very badly. Jim rushed to the triage site where UC Davis students were working as part of the veterinary emergency response team to treat animals suffering from the effects of the fire. The badly burned goat was unrecognizable. That's not my goat, he said. But at the sound of her owner's voice, Feather, who was struggling just to breathe, bleated and fought to get to her feet. It was the beginning of a long fight for Feather. But through it all, all the painful debriding, cold laser therapy, acupuncture, and a host of other treatments, Feather's eyes communicated her spunk and will to live. Ten months after the campfire nightmare began, Jim Clark was finally able to bring Feather home to her herd. And his remarkable goat greeted her herd mates with headbutts and a happy dance. And Jim knew, finally, that Feather was going to be okay. I'd like to thank everybody at UC Davis, from Dr. Manasha Garway, all the veterinarians that helped them. Everyone's been spectacular. I really can't thank everyone enough. Feather wouldn't be here without everyone's help. Huh, not to mention all the other animals that needed help. Thank you, everybody. Wow, Sean, that last story makes me so glad I'm studying to be a vet. I know, it seems like miracles happen every day at UC Davis. There's one more story I think we should share before we go. You know, the one about the future. You mean the one about the exciting plan for the new UC Davis Veterinary Medical Center? Phase one includes a centrally located all species imaging center to conveniently serve all patients, large and small, as well as provide technology and expertise at the cutting edge of detecting, diagnosing, and treating disease and trauma. It also includes a new equine performance center with a new arena and high-tech gate analysis capability for lameness evaluations and early detection. And the Livestock and Field Services Center. Fun fact, the center has been designed in consultation with Temple Grandin, PhD, well known for her groundbreaking work in engineering humane animal facilities. 
as well as the movie that bears her name. You know, Bianca, even given the current facility, UC Davis has a long history of providing a great education for veterinary medical students. But when I think about how much more the new Vet Med Center would bring as far as opportunities for students, faculty, and most importantly, the patients, honestly, I'm very sad I'll be gone before it's completed. Yeah, me too. Once fully realized, it will be the premier veterinary facility in the world and allow UC Davis clinician scientists to set new standards for veterinary medicine. But Vet Med isn't the only school with big ideas around here. Big ideas abound across the entire UC Davis community. On the Sacramento campus, for instance, incredible faculty are accomplishing amazing things in human health care every day. Let's hear from a couple of them now. Imagine driving home one night, and instead of arriving safely, you end up in a horrible car accident. Fortunately, you survive. But both of your legs are shattered above the knee. Your life, as you once knew it, has been shattered as well. Now you must face weeks and months of grueling surgeries as doctors piece together what's left of your bones and wait for them to painstakingly grow and heal. More than a year from the accident, your body and your life are still only a fraction of what they used to be. And you're beginning to realize you may never fully recover. This is one patient's actual story, but it could be any of us. Bone and cartilage loss due to injury, repetitive motion in everyday activities, aging, or disease impacts every part of our society and has a significant impact on the quality and aspect of all of our lives. And unfortunately, many of us will experience these debilitating effects at some point in our lifetime. And for those unlucky enough to experience severe trauma, the only currently available solutions are sometimes artificial joints or amputation. Now, imagine a different reality. Imagine one in which living medicines, such as cells and other complex products, are used to help your body heal itself without the need for invasive surgeries or the side effects of traditional medicines, and quality of life is restored at higher levels much more rapidly, where your own body is able to regenerate bone, cartilage, muscle, and other essential tissues and organs, as well as strengthen your immune system to prevent and cure otherwise debilitating diseases. That's what we're creating here at UC Davis Health. We're forging new frontiers and changing the face of healthcare one clinical trial at a time. In fact, through the Institute for Regenerative Cures, We've established cross-disciplinary teams of scientists and medical doctors working on nearly every area of medicine, including cancer, heart disease, neurological disorders, eye diseases, and blood disorders. We have 41 ongoing clinical trials and more than 20 in the pipeline pending FDA approval for clinical trials. We see great promise for many common medical problems, but particularly in orthopedic surgery, where functional limitations can affect life severely in so many segments of society. Adult stem cells and regenerative medicine offer huge potential for rapidly healing damaged tissues, broken bones, and cartilage injuries. At UC Davis, stem cells from fat and bone marrow are routinely used to treat athletic injuries in horses by our colleagues in the Center for Equine Health. Through teamwork and collaboration, we are rapidly translating these advances to human patients who've also been inflicted with athletic injuries. For example, what you see here on the screen is a video of real paramedic adult stem cells, which have been dyed red, and they're assisting damaged muscle cells in green. If you look very closely, you can see the red cells actually putting little red batteries or mitochondria into the green cells to give them energy and to help them heal. Amazing, right? And this is only one tiny example of the transformational work we're doing. Our research spans the spectrum of medicine, and yet we've only begun to scratch the surface of what's possible. There's still so much work to be done, and UC Davis is well positioned to be the place to do it. We have one of only two FDA-approved good manufacturing practice facilities in the state of California, which allows us to produce FDA-approved cellular products for clinical trials, not only for our own use, but also for the use of our academic and industry partners. 
We have the privilege of collaborating with some of the most prestigious programs in the country without even leaving UC Davis. Our School of Veterinary Medicine is number one in the world, and our partnership enables us to translate novel therapies from animals to humans in record time. We have a top-ranked biomedical engineering department and an internationally recognized stem cell center. It allows us the ability to regrow new tissues with cells and cutting edge carriers that can actually restore or replace damaged tissues or even whole organs. And our orthopedic surgery program is outstanding. It's consistently ranked among the nation's best in the care of patients afflicted with musculoskeletal diseases and injuries. When you take all of these important assets and combine them with the spirit of teamwork and collaboration, along with adequate funding and support from our friends, partners, and devoted benefactors and advocates, miracles can happen. We imagine a future where UC Davis is the destination of choice for safe and effective adult stem cell and regenerative medicine treatments for sports-related injuries. And because of that, and the research and therapies it will allow us to pursue, will also be able to improve the quality of life for ordinary people like you and me from all around the world. The world's come to expect great things from UC Davis. The bold, the daring, the big ideas that do more than address today. They solve for tomorrow. Because we've never viewed better as before and after. Systems are ever evolving. And instead of letting them evolve around us, we change with them and lead the charge. We invite you to lead with us answering the questions the world has yet to ask. Educating the students who dream of a brighter, healthier, and more just tomorrow. Shaping the course of what's happening to what can and should be. We keep the big picture in frame with a clear understanding of every detail. Bringing that image into focus, it takes a different way of thinking. a different way of looking at the world. It takes a fresh point of view beyond a single vision. The kinds of collaborations that advance what's healthy, humane, and right. The kind of approaches that push the edges of unconventional. The kinds of solutions that reframe what's possible. the kinds of leaders that reveal a new way forward. Big ideas that seem unimaginable at the start simply need the time and space to grow. To uproot injustice, to remove barriers, to break through. And to do it all over again, better. When the world calls on UC Davis, it expects great things. With your help, we can show the world it should expect even greater. Expect greater from UC Davis for the world. Inspiring. That was good. Uh, wow, and I'm not surprised. I mean, everything Davis does is top notch. That's and fantastic. So, yeah. That is yeah. absolutely fantastic. <laughs> this is something to get excited about. You know, when we think about Davis, it's really where things all started for us as a couple and a family. And it really allowed us to dream dreams and just imagine the impossible. Those all came as a result of dreaming those dreams back at Davis. Davis saw something in us that we didn't see in ourselves. My mother-in-law has a saying that selflessness is not thinking less of yourself, but thinking of yourself less. 
And Davis has taught us to um, really look beyond ourselves and look at uh, uh, the big picture, look at others and, 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 and think of others. The campaign is really important because it helps everyone. And when you think about some of the big ideas, these are global initiatives that will really make the world a better place. And that's what UC Davis is all about. Um, it's not just about you know, education, it's about how it's applied to lives in society. I would challenge you just to come back to campus. Just, even It's just for a day to come back, to, to re-engage and come back to campus. That would be my challenge. Because there is something at Davis that you love, that you're passionate about, that aligns with your values and your interests. So engage with Davis and you will find something that is absolutely in line with what you want to do. But once we got there and started really engaging with the students is what really caught our eye, that the students that were there, they were still going through some of the things that Daryl and I experienced when we were in Davis. And so that's what we want. Everything we do, we want to impact the students and we want them to live in a world where they feel safe and uh, included and feel uh, like they can make a difference. When you think about UC Davis, it's easy to think about buildings, but really it's the people. <laughs> and sometimes when you think you're helping one person, it's like you don't realize it's like throwing a pebble in the pond, it ripples. And before you know it, helping one person has actually helped the country. And um, that's really what we need to think about when we think about Davis. We want people to be encouraged to shoot for the stars and to really follow their imagination and expect greater. Well, hello again, and thank you for joining us on this remarkable journey. As you can see, we have so much time and so little to do. Wait, strike that, <laughs> reverse it. <laughs> it's been fun. We hope you'll come along for the rest of the ride. But hold on tight. We're not exactly sure what's gonna happen. What we do know is this. 
Together, we will redefine expectations for what a great public research university can achieve in partnership with those who share its vision for a better world. That's what makes it so exciting. We hope you enjoy it as much as we do. We know that you will. See you soon. Where we dare to dream. Where big ideas are bursting at the seams. We're advancing new frontiers like an oil machine. If there's a vision to reach, you'll find us Aggies on the scene. We're the passion and the progress, and you can play a part. Of helping push the boundaries and doing it with heart. We're ready to move forward, strong, determined, and bold. Praise the seeds of future and planet.